Welcome back to the speeder, man. I'm Drunken Dan. We need to check out the, the mask of Martin Lee. Man, you know what? I find it interesting. I find it kind of funny that Cats was like basically sent out to die because it's like, oh yeah, you're released in December, which admittedly, which isn't a great month for most movies, and also going to share an opening weekend with Star Wars. And it's like fair enough that would be enough to kill any other movie, any movie, uh, and you know just Cats is shit. But then it's like, oh, Star Wars is also been sent out to die apparently so yeah you know what's funny is um this is for the this is for the uh for sabo in the audience so for like a split second i had a conspiracy theory because i was like wait are they uh, is it disney does disney own this because i legit thought for a second that possibly this was done intentionally to mitigate <laughs> star wars's failure that was like for a split second i thought that oh they don't own they don't nah, it's own, uh, it was the it's universal production it's their ball. Yeah, yeah. I was. Cats, so, is, I was cats wrong is, on that. So, cats is so bad that they're they're sending out a new version of theaters with better effects. But it's no, like, you know what's funny though. It ha yeah, it has better effects. But the funny thing is, it um, while that is technically true, the uh, it's got fa it has um, you know, like unfinished visual effects. But guess what? It's guess what? It's gotten. It's gotten a fucking like nomination for an award for best visual effects. Yeah. I want to point out. Godzilla's not on that list. <sighs> no, because Godzilla's not art, but Cats is. Because, I mean... Yeah. If you want you want to know the... Uh, go, go ahead, Train, I'm going to explain the what Cats is about, because someone explained it to me, and I everything mean, I everything kinda, clicked. I feel like I'm I think both of you enough, like, Godzilla meet Godzilla King of the Monsters meme stuff for you to look at that and go, man, there's some good effects in that movie. Oh, yeah, the movie has great visual effects. It's really good. Um, but... Here's what I, I learned. So my one friend who's... Uh, so I'm in, in the theater a bit, but not as much as he is. So he's like, hey, do you want me to explain to you the plot of Cats? And no, it's not great. And I was like, okay, what is it? They're bored. What? Yeah, they're bored. The plot of Cats is they're just bored. They're cats and they're bored. The plot of Cats is they're bored and they're going to go, like, send somebody to heaven to, to do something. I, I, I never really... I never really quite figured out how that works. So Cats had to be like put in the nomination before it was even out, right? Oh, definitely. Like it must have been in the running, and it's like, why would you risk doing the Oscars for a movie that's a not out and b about and b is? I mean, maybe. Oh, I think I get it. Maybe Academy's just all closet furries. Or the or it's all political. I mean, what? Oh, it's just because Cats that's because that's... Cats was a big theater show, and like, oh, this must be solid art that we can critique without. Yeah, but you know, it's funny when that when that came out, people were making fun of it. That's yeah, how like, not good why, Cats was. Yeah, but like, why visual effects though? Of all things, like, surely you just make up some other what bullshit, else, some other stupid. What else, what else are you gonna nominate it for? The music? I'm pretty sure the Broadway mu the Broadway version is better than the movie music. Although apparently Taylor Swift is really good. In that. That'd be great. She hasn't asked. I, don't know. I can't believe people would. I can't believe people would say that. But yes, I still like. Uh, was it the, the proving that the critic, uh, the the cartoon is eternal? Is someone? People have been linking that fucking clip of the, like the burning car smashing into a theater playing Cats and Jay Sherman just going and nothing of value was lost. I mean, quite a lot of value was actually lost. Universal's probably lost a fuckload of money on this. But hey, oh. Disney's also lost money on Rise of Skywalker. So it's true. It is very true. Uh, we 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 won't like Trey and I won't talk spoiler talk until the game it's been out like on DVD for a little bit. We'll, we'll talk around that time. But like I'm not, I was just gonna say that it's kind of one of those things where not even the foreign markets is really gonna help because it's had like worldwide release and it's still not doing great. And yeah, well, it really, uh, I got, which I got, the I got Chinese... to step out for a second, but I'll yeah, come back fair. to that when I get back. Oh, yeah. The Chinese market, well, just famously doesn't like Star Wars. So, especially not going to like Star Wars with Black Man plastered on the front. Yeah. Though, th though, as predicted, the one thing I will say, so, because there was the on-screen background two girls kissing thing. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That people, right people right away were like, and I agree with them, I was like, yeah, they're going to edit that out in certain foreign markets. Yeah, guess what? They've already, we already had that confirmed for Singapore. I mean... We all saw it coming. Nice gay bait. Just saying, nice gay bait. Uh, I think... I might even make this point before, but a friend of mine has long since pointed out that the weird thing is, is that whenever they want to do like uh, a gay, whenever they want to do a gay couple in films and like video games these days, it is almost always lesbians. Oh yeah, yeah. We've, we, I think we've talked about that before yeah, too. I, I, I legit, like the, the the short version for people that have already heard this. Basically, 
what I, I honest to God, it. want to see more of sure. is more of, what like, like male gay, uh, gay relationships. I... I want to see more of that, because we know why. It's because there's a lot of, like, straight dudes who get off on lesbian relationships. That's the thing. It, it's yeah. honestly sexualized. It's fucked up, but that's what's going on. Yeah, but, like, at the same time... And, the, the, and the, um, and, like, movie go... And, like, um, I guess the mainstream audiences are more comfortable with that, oddly. It's just I how they are. I don't agree with it. I don't like it, but mask, it's, I think it's what it is. I kind of want to say it stems more from, like... The way the role of women is being changed in terms of film story. and portrayals, she's in trouble. which has not always been too, which you know has uh, been. It, uh, I think I know what you're. I think I know what you're no, getting no, no, at. No, 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 it, it's been a very controversial subject, and I think that by, and I, I kind of want to say that by using lesbians, it's ticking two boxes at once, as opposed to just ticking one box. Mm. Whereas if they say, "Oh, we got lesbians," and it's like, "Hey, look, it's women getting to do women th getting to do the things in these movies," the and also we get we get really lesbians in, and it's like, I'm all for like, like same-sex couples and like story. fiction. Go for it. I, I just kind of want it to be either a like import like no, semi-important to the characters, and doesn't just feel sort of really hastily tacked on to score brownie points, like. So I watched Voltron, right? The Legend of Defender Netflix show. I might have even bitch about this one here before. When you're when you're done, I'm gonna show. You, I'm gonna talk about one that's pretty good that was in Outer Worlds. Uh, but uh, you you do this first, and then I'll talk about Outer Worlds where there was one. And so it was really so Voltron good. has a lot of problems, and it honestly gets. Uh, it only has two good two good seasons out of it. it's like five or six seasons. I forget which. And like they decided to make one of the main characters gay. Fair enough. It wasn't any. It was wasn't like the ones that everyone wanted to be but it's just kind of they make him gay but and they but they like have his relationship be really like off to the side like i mean is in the person he's uh, you know in a partnership with is like literally only in one scene which in of itself might not have been so bad but then they decided the final shot of the show had to be the this character and his like gay lover like getting married and having their big sort of kiss scene that's like i i would I'm okay with that if it was like if they were more of a character and their person and their sort of interaction and relationship was divided up was dealt up more so it was like a payoff but when you just have that as you'll see with no okay like, I see what you're saying when you have I was because like, I, I was originally going to jump and be like yeah but that's what they usually do with straight couples but you, but if there wasn't like a character or to where it's a payoff then yeah you yeah get the point that's all I'm getting at is that without like any sort of actual build up or like they literally have one scene together across like the entire like the five seasons of the show and it's like and it's them breaking up essentially so it's like you have no none of that real payoff or element and it's a character who's not even really a character so when you have that as your final shot of the show it's like you were still looking it just that it just makes it cut feel very icky and not right not in that way in the sense of it's like you're just using this to score brownie points right no i i, I agree with you um and for for like the audience, like I, I'm saying that while like like saying like my writing or even like when I'm GMing, there are characters who are gay. Um, sometimes it's in the background, sometimes it's part of their character, sometimes they're bi, asexual, so on. Now, uh, well, I was going to talk about Outer Worlds when it was pre done pretty well. So, um, one of the main char one of the party members, Pavati, is a to, to kind of make, make quick. She's an asexual lesbian, as in like you know romantically she's attracted to women, but like you know she doesn't fuck. And they actually make that a big thing where she talks about her issues with, like, you know, relationships she's had in the past. Uh, as you, you know, you help, you basically are helping her because she's already, like, an anxious person. Um, basically ask this person out. And that's most of her thing is just going, is helping set up her date with this girl and everything. Like, first, you know, getting her confidence up. You take her to the bar at one point and talk to her. Uh, stuff like that. But, uh... And they did a really good job with it, and uh, in general, Outer, Outer Worlds, I, I highly recommend. Um, it's a really good game, but uh, but yeah, I see I see what you're talking about, um, and I agree with you. A lot of it is for brownie points, and you can also be like Last of Us, where you literally do the same plot twice with Ellie, where you have her girlfriend die both times after you show well then the first it wasn't as bad in the dlc one but in the, in the other one where it's like yeah we're gonna show you this trailer of them making out and i'm gonna show you the second trailer where the where the girl's fucking dead 
God, I don't want it's to it's it's very obvious like baiting and it's fucked up. God, I don't want to talk about Last of Us because I know a bunch of like things are naming it like Game of the Decade, and I fucking hate oh that. no 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 not not even close not even like, close for me. Uh, I just dislike it because the only re because it's like. It's this fucking same thing we've seen like time and time again of here is sad dad with sad dad with surrogate child and it's like it's so fucking on the nose and heavy handed it's like oh look Joel had a daughter that was the same age as Ellie is now so that you know because it'd be impossible otherwise for, the, to, for them to like form a connection or bond oh no so it has to be that she's literally like a replacement for his dead for his dead daughter um, and it's, it's kind of fucked up when you really think about it uh, yeah and then it's just kind of that set along the backdrop of like fucking cliche of every zombie movie cliche ever made and it's just yeah like i don't know uncharted was uh uncharted was an interesting case because there were lots of issues with it but it was this kind of sort of genuine it was this like sort of I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it it was an experience that sort of did what it set out to do, which would be like a sort of high wheeling action adventure that was set in the same style of like movies, you know, like Indiana Jones, obviously heavily inspired by Indiana Jones, but sort of playing off of those sort of action adventure tropes. So you're not like necessarily, it's not necessarily striving to be anything better than what it is, and what it is is trying to just be a good game about treasure hunting. Like, there are, right. like, like, I know I'm trying, like, there's the whole complaint of, well, Nathan Drake just kills a fuckload of people and doesn't care, but it's like, well, for what the well, game th is. Well, also, the story wasn't going for something like that. Well, for what? Like, like, like it'd be kind of like criticizing Dragon Ball for not being philosophical when it's not trying to be. It's just a well, dumb... Then, there's a weird, like, moment in Uncharted 2 where, like, they, where it's kind of like, you know in, um, Man of Steel, you know in, like, uh, Batman v Superman when they're about to fight Doomsday? And then they very explicitly say, like, oh, good thing we're fighting in the abandoned dockyard because all the people have gone home, so there's no one in this entire area that we're about to Oh, yeah, yeah, because, and that was all because of that complaint about Man of Steel, which I always thought... Which, we complain, we've poked fun at Man of Steel, but out of all the things, that was, like, the stupidest thing people latched onto. I mean, there are lots of other complaints to be made about Man of Steel, yes, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, d definitely. I think. We, we've done it. We've done, we've done most of them. That's, like, the one where we're like, wait, really? This is the one you guys are fucking latching onto? But I work on the basis of this because a lot of people who complain about Man of Steel in that regard aren't, su aren't super, don't really know or like Superman, so it's just it's an easy thing to say. Of, but Superman's supposed to be this perfect guy who just why well, couldn't he just do that? It's like well, I mean, when has any person of Superman ever successfully been able to do that? Up against the guy who's as strong as he is. Well, like successfully stop them without without like a. Well, giant yeah, like, property damage. Yeah, like every fight in every suit. Basically, yeah, it's, every suit it's very. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in, the, in Metropolis itself. So. Yeah, it's very, very rare that he's able to actually get it to where there's not that as an issue. But anyway, that's another thing. So I, I don't hate Last of Us, but I just don't like it. Like, it's not a very particularly fun video game, so I can't enjoy the gameplay aspects and. As I said, the story and the setting are just so sort of played out. They're just every trope you've ever seen. Well, that's because uh, also, like, we've seen. Because of, like, Walking Dead being so popular, we've seen so many fucking, uh. fucking zombie shit that it's just tiring. Like. It doesn't. Like, but yeah, that's the point. Like, they ultimately. At, at the end of the day, like, Last of Us. It's very much feels very much comes off of the back of like Walking Dead season one it has more or less the same dynamic of two character of uh, you know older grizzled man who's like seen shit seen and done shit having to like pair up with a young innocent girl and teach her how to survive in this like crap sack destroyed post apocalyptic zombie infested world and it's like so that doesn't help it and it's just uh, like the cinem like the cinematic level of it doesn't um, sort of like uncharted has like uncharted 2 specifically has like the benefit of like have all these like crazy set pieces that are all playable it's like it's not like it, it, things that would be cutscenes in most other games are like interactable in uncharted right 2. so like you can you, know, you can say that yes there's like the sort of there is the um I'm trying to think of a word now but there's like the spectacle of it if you will right right well, it's that thing, too, where it's uh, Uncharted isn't really trying to be anything more than just a fun, wacky adventure thing. 
Yeah. It's not trying to be serious, not trying to like have a message. It's just a thing. It's like well, I was saying it's like it, like it's it's not hey, as complicated like and it's not trying Don't to be complicated. Story, yeah. Sure Instead you can just focus on the gameplay, whereas Unch whereas yeah. Last of Us tries very much We're to be like a game about a, a game that is story dri story and character driven story. and well. I don't like the story or the characters. It's fine. I don't hate Joel and Ellie, but like, it, if it comes to like my, if it comes to like sad dads in video game in like sort of current gen video games, I'm gonna pick Kratos over Joel because at least Kratos smashes yeah, I agree. heads in. If we're about to pick pick dads in general, oh, oh, I, I pick Kiryu. Just saying. Yeah, like there's plenty. Well, I, mean, I was talking about. I just yeah, but like. But he's not a sad dad. He's so, not sad. You know. dad. He's an angry dad. Kiryu only has one rage, only has one emotion. Rage. Righteous Fury. Righteous Fury. It is his only, it is his singular emotion and it works. But yeah, so like, Last of Us sort of bothers me with the accolades it gets and I'm not going to say it's entirely because I uh, have surprised Ellie was a lesbian all along because even before they did the big re that big reveal and was getting like amazing hype for being as i said uh the same story that you've heard a thousand times but now it's got un now it's got naughty dog attached to it naughty dog do good things right it, it's it never really appealed to me because so like zombie stuff like what well, i don't Just like walking dead for starters like i mean i think everyone knows that i've I've, I've, I've said it multiple times in recordings but uh, like, The Walking Dead in general has really put a distaste for, like, zombie stuff in me, because I'm just so tired of it. And I'm saying this as someone who's, like, literally, for their, because their brother's a big fan of it, like, bought, like, Walking Dead shit for them for Christmas. But, um, it's just, I just don't care for it. It's just, and, like, when I saw, like, Last of Us, I'm like, this just feels more like that kind of stuff, and it just didn't appeal to me. Now, I know, like, say, I, I like Resident Evil Revelations 2, it took a lot of mechanics from The Last of Us, but I prefer Resident Evil Revelations 2. But the trade-off is that Resident Evil Revelations 2 is connected to a universe and a franchise that you also like, so it's, it has that added benefit. And, one of the, and, one, and also one of the major characters is like one of my favorite Resident Evil characters as well, so there's that too. Yeah, Barry Burton. I was talking about Claire. Oh, I think you meant Barry. No, I was actually talking about Claire. Me, Barry. Those Listen, I'm in the Moira camp of I'm tired of this meme. We should have confiscated this. Well, I was even yes, about yes, I know her development has her and her father get together and ma make up and everything, but I'm in the Moira camp of. <laughs> yeah, well. These folks will escort you to Barry loves his family. It's just his family are his guns. So one thing I want to ask, since uh, I kind of want to say what will be around, but I don't. I legit don't know when he'll be back at this point. Yeah. Um. Because we never really got to talk about MJ, and we kind of ended off on that last time. We we're gonna be like, "Hey, we'll talk about MJ." So I'm gonna ask you a question before we do, because for the audience, to, for the audience now, I have finished the story mode. I know where everything goes. I have my, I have full complete thoughts on each character. So I want to ask you, Train. Do you think I should discuss my thoughts on MJ as a total now, or do you think I should just mention what I felt at, about her at this time in the story in the game? I think it's what you felt this time in the story of the game, just because, like... Okay, it's so, you know what, that's, that's how we'll do it. That's how like, we'll do it each time. A we can come back to a lot. Yeah, so I will easy. talk about it easy. now, how I felt about her at this point in time in the story. So, with the cutscene we ended off on last time, with it kind of implied that, and also, like, some of the dialogue in her stealth mission implied that she was probably, like, the worry of her boyfriend from, like, all the dangerous shit he was doing is why he, she broke up with him. Now, I kind of get that, though there's the whole thing where she's risking her own life at this point, so it kind of comes off as stupid. We'll go more into detail about my full thoughts. That's about, it's not passion right now, because it would have been if we recorded this actually at that time, because I was still really early in at that time. That's why I'm just kind of, I sound very distant to what I'm saying, but that's what I felt at the time. I'm going to take you through my ride of MJ up until, like, towards the end of this game, where I'm going to give you my full... Where we'll discuss more in depth about MJ, and I'm going to be blunt. I think out of every... This is the only thing I will say. Out of everything in this game, 
Norman never it's the only thing I don't like writing wise. I think everything else works, and everything works well, and it's really well done. Peter is well written. Actually, one thing I want. Actually, speaking of Peter, I'm gonna talk about something about because we're talking about like uh, the female writing thing. It's actually something I want to talk about with the uh, the with male writing in a second. Yeah. Uh, which we might as well at this point, unless you want to add anything, or if you just want to wait until we get closer to the MJ stuff. Ooh. You know, actual MJ. I'm gonna wait till we get to the actual MJ stuff because like I've got views and I have. But I also, Our, I also ours have, are very similar. I know that. I also, but I also sort of have the, I, I also have the understanding that it's the I'm nobody the really wants to island. take undertake the task of trying to sort of. Like, I think MJ. Do, do MJ. MJ is a victim of the fact that she's comp that she is inherently sort of a more complicated character than like, obviously Spider-Man. Than, mo than most love interests, yeah. Well, yeah, Spider-Man characters in general are typically... Actually, uh, other than Doc Ock before the Sam Raimi movie, funny enough. I think... I think Doc, Doc Ock got improved by Sam Raimi. I think it's because a lot of Spider-Man characters can be boiled down into a few, like, basic traits, and MJ is a lot harder to do because she's had probably the most amount of overall growth of every of Spider-Man characters over, like, you know, the 60-odd years she's been in existence. Yeah, she's like, developed a lot. Like JJ, oh well, God. JJ hates Spider-Man. God, I forgot how annoying. I forgot how annoying the brutes are in early game. Yeah. <laughs> but like, so JJ Cause... can boil down to he hates Spider-Man. Spider-Man, you can boil down to uh, he's miserable and also equips it bad. Equips it back. Oh, you know what's funny? That reminds me. There was a shirt I saw, uh, at, like a customer wearing at work, and I was laughing because they had like you know it was like one of those like collage pictures where it's like this character and then like you know courageous stealthy or what have you mm. for spider-man you want to know what they wrote it's really funny annoying happy uh, and i was like you are we are we are we familiar with the same character well, like, so <laughs> anyway go ahead so like, all the other characters have their really easy basic traits that are easy to just go get across are uh, you know well as, as implied somewhat easy to translate because MJ is a uh, very complicated relationship with both the things she does and her relationship with Peter and ev and her capabilities. And... She, she doesn't really fit very easily into a box. Yeah, so it becomes a lot more difficult of if you're writing her like trying to keep trying to the, or ways to utilize her, I think, and utilize her in a way that also highlights her strengths. So I think she's. I think MJ in this is a victim of like. Well, let's write a different character and we'll call her MJ because I mean everyone knows Spider-Man and Mary Jane Watson's thing. So you just have yeah this character. So, so like a lot of people are like, okay, MJ model redhead. Okay, we're done. Yeah. As I said, her relationship with every, with. And the universe and Spider-Man and herself is a lot more complicated than the most typical love interests who can, who do sort of generally fall into like these also sort of easy soundbite-esque ways you can break them down. Yeah. So she's very much a victim of that in this game. And I think that's, yeah. well, I'll leave it at that for now. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss more about it. Like, honestly, it's so fucking tempting for me to really get into it, but, um... So, so we're talking about female writing, so one thing that we, we have... So we were talking about that a little bit, but one thing I've noticed, kind of on the flip side, one thing that uh, movies feel very uncomfortable with doing with males is writing, like, more sensitive characters. And I'm not talking about a anime or anything like that, because we've been seeing that more in anime lately. I I'm talking about, like, um... Like, for example, like, they don't know how to deal with Superman. Like, Warner Bros. said that they don't know what to do with Superman in terms of his personality when he's just an all-loving guy who is, like, a, a really soft-hearted kind of dude. Now, mind you, animation stuff has figured out how to... Even that fucking Harley Quinn cartoon has figured out how to write Superman. I'm not kidding, by the way. They, they have a really funny scene with Superman in it, and it's really well done, and it's very in character. He's basically, like, like an uncle to Damian Wayne, and it's fucking perfect. Uh, complete with like complete with like bad uh, bad uncle puns <laughs> but um like hollywood for some re for some reason is really w like they, they don't know how to do like a male character outside of like you know quote quote manly if you know what i mean mm, I don't think. like like I think. and then when they they attempt it like you get and then when they attempt to not they do peter the you know the mcu peter not 
Not the Peter that we know. I think... I think the most prevalent male character that's been writ that's being written about in movies currently, honestly, is, is an idiot. Is the idiot. Yeah, we're getting a lot of the idiot. But I mean, so I mean, like, uh, I mean, we're not going to talk about Rise of Skywalker, but take the Last Jedi for instance, right? Like the yeah. film goes out of its way to like sort of undermine the male characters at every opportunity. So like anything that a male character does is sort of followed up with chest with either like chewing out from a female character or female character overtakes the scene. So like there are no successful male characters in the Last Jedi, which is bad. Which is bad because you don't make you don't like make people in you don't endear people or characters to people by. Having to under, undercut other people. By undercutting another character, it just annoys people when you do that. It's similar to, like, so, this won't be a gender one, but, like, so, one thing that pissed off, uh, uh, was it, uh, fans of, uh, Halo was, uh, in Halo 5, yeah, it was Halo 5, they, uh, introduced a new character to Halo who took over the main character slot. Welcome back. Uh, they introduced a new character to Halo who took over the main character slot, who I don't remember the name of, but what they did to introduce him right off the bat is like, oh no, he's better than Master Chief in every way, and beats Master Chief in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like, the, it, basically the Poochie. I, I usually talk about characters like that as the Poochie, regardless of their gender. That's what they kind of remind me of. Even though Poochie was a parody of these kind of things, it's just the easiest way to explain it. Um, like... Now, I don't put Rose as the Poochie. She's something else. She's a whole other Rose, box oh, of shit. Rose Tico. Yeah. You know what, what's funny? As a time are of this you, recording, are you still talking I saw. About Star Wars? Uh, sort of. Well, no, we were talking about. No, no, no. We were talking about the way characters are written, and then I mentioned that yeah. The Last Jedi specifically has all of its. Uh, Last Jedi just became. Last Jedi just came up as an example for something that we were using. Is all. It is um, literally being taught in schools right now as like examples so, of bad writing. So. Wow. All right. So um, so this is this is this is this is my piece on um, the Last Skywalker. Because I, I saw a bunch of my friends lately. The one thing I'll say is uh, just uh, on now now the one thing I will say is uh, just avoid spoiler talk. Yeah, uh, yeah, cause no, no, we, no, just... I want to, I, I want to wait until the DVD's been out, is pretty much what I'm, I'm trying to do. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead and talk, right, talk so, about what you were going so, to. So, uh, so, 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 I, I talked to three friends, one hated it, but she liked The Last Jedi, and said that if I hated The Last Jedi, I might like this. Uh, so, got... I've seen, uh, and I, I, oh, I know no, what you're thinking. Let him finish. Okay, sorry. Okay. Right, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And uh, one guy said uh, he thought it was fine and that everyone is overreacting and that people take Star Wars too seriously. I mean, that's not entirely untrue, to be honest. Mm. And then one said it was the worst thing ever and J.J. Uh, Abrams is going to hell. I don't know about that. He's going to get paid a lot of money. I mean, I said to Dad. It's that at the end of at the end of the day, you're not going to talk about spoilers. So I'm not really going to talk about my views on the film because a I've not really seen it. I've got all the secondhand information, so I can't say 100 percent for sure if it's bad. But like, there is the point that it was always sort of that as a film, Rise of Skywalker was sort of doomed to fail. Like, it's coming off the back of the Last Jedi, and the Last Jedi gave it literally nowhere out, nowhere to go. Like every yeah, I, actually. So I, I saw like James Rawls' thing on it, and even he's like, yeah. So I originally thought it was all right, and then when I watched it again, like for Last Jedi, he's like, yeah. Um, it doesn't really leave any kind of plot thread for the other movie to work with. Like, there's literally nothing. So everything was dumped. In favor, all in the all in the means of you know subverting expectations because well he was he was obsessed with this idea of subverting what you were expecting and forgot oh yeah I'm supposed to make a fucking story but I kind of said to I kind of told Dan my view, my views on that how hypo hypocritical that the film is about that where it's like even though they do this whole thing about kill the past and subverting expectations all they do is hard like push push the franchise back into exactly the status quo it was in uh, thirty years ago. Like, at the end of the day, the Last Jedi can subvert expectation on the white. It doesn't change. It doesn't actually subvert the fact that it has literally just done Empire again, but shitty. Like all the sto all the same beats are there. The like the characters are in more or less sim incredibly similar situations. It's just that the Last Jedi gets just, rid of. Just, 
and it gets rid of like any kind of tension or a cliffhanger or anything. Yeah. And then the last Jedi gets Obviously. rid of. Um, oh, good. Hey guys, I'm about to go in and fight Shocker. You know what that means? It's time I'm gonna to start fight. posting Shocker memes. It's time for Shocker memes. We're not chasing Hold on. him. We're just gonna go up and talk to him. No, no, I'm about to break in. Get back here, Shocker! Oh. I just gotta wait for him to get into. I just gotta wait for him to go into the uh, the vault. It's, it's get not, back not, here, Shocker! I'll not chase enough, you to the end of the not earth. Enough heavy, not enough heavy breathing in that. You're right. You can't escape me. I'll yeah, chase you, you said to that. the ends of the earth. Sabo, you have no idea, literally, because you can't see. But you said you can't escape me as Spider-Man closed the vault. <laughs> Oh my god, that was perfect. <laughs> anyway, back to the conversation at hand, so, now that yeah. we're done shocker memes. The Last Jedi got rid of every sort of plot point that Rise of Skywalker could have followed, and, and and it's sort of debatable, it depends on who you ask about what about if there was ever a plan for this franchise, or for like these, these three yeah. films or not, because like... I don't think there was. Ryan Johnson swears blind that he was, he was given nothing, he was given complete free reign, whereas Jake... J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy have said, oh no, there was like guidelines and a manual that was given out. Ron Jones just chose that he, to ignore that it. He, that he proceeded to ignore it. I, I, I think like... They, they had, I can believe both. I, I can believe a I bit think, of both. I think what they were doing is they were assuming he'd go where everyone thought it was going to go. And he decided, nah. Well, the pro well, problem is until we get like a hard confirmation about any of this. Well, well, the very... one thing I do know about Kathleen Kennedy is that she would constantly kept firing people. They're not personally and... mattered. Yeah. She was constantly firing people for uh, just whatever, for quote unquote creative differences, including like the uh, direct because the writer for uh, uh, was it Empire Strikes Back was on the first was on the Awakening. Yeah, he did he did bits of Force Awakens. Uh, like he got fired. He got um, fired. So right. There were so many examples of this. There was the whole uh, thing with with Solo. There was one with Rebels even. Uh, there was one with literally like. All of these, where she would just fire them like mid-production. The, the 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 entire management of the Star Wars franchise since Kathleen Kennedy was given the helm has been fucking amateur hour at best. It's kind of impressive, really, because even prequels made money. Yeah, like uh, you can say what you like about the prequels. So they and still and also, so, so without spoilers, the uh, the uh, they at least felt like a trilogy too. I'm just gonna say that without spoilers because I, I I I have seen it, but uh. What Rise of Skywalker? Yeah. Oh, you have seen it. It's that, right? it's not good, well, but it's it's you remember how I said I want this to be a train wreck at this point? Yeah. I, I was kind of happy with how fucking much of a train wreck it yeah, was. Yeah. Uh, to where it's so stupid, it's like yeah, the director just doesn't give a shit at this point, and I don't blame well, him. I don't think it's even that. I think it's just you're literally tasking a man who. I bitched about with his uh, that he's he, he can't end shit for the inability to end things because he doesn't he believes and his quote his quote to the saying as much that the story that the meat of the story is the mystery because what he calls the mystery box like the story doesn't have resolution it's just more questions which you know that makes no goddamn which, sense all well and good when you're doing like parts one and two less good when you're doing part three of the trilogy and you kind of need to provide resolution so. He has like no building blocks to work with. A man who famously has trouble with ending things, and then like there's no goodwill left for Star Wars by this point. Like yeah, like because it can't have been an easy thing. Well, because I mean, fuck, there's enough interviews with all the actors where they basically say, yeah, after this, I'm just fucking done with Star Wars, because like the fans like. Regardless of if you like The Last Jedi or not, you can't deny the fact that it is controversial and it's probably the most. Yeah. It's one of the most and... base breaking films I've ever seen. Like, yeah. It's... We, 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 there's like literally now, ever since uh, Rise of Skywalker's come out, there's like this weird debate over which one is like, no, this is the one that ruined it. No, this is the one that ruined it. And I'm just sitting here like, they're both shit. They all <laughs> ruined it. Yeah. They're all this is just shit. This is a shit show. The Force Awakens is the is the origin of it all. It's not the worst, but it's definitely the progenitor and it's But anyway, so like there's lots of conversations to be had about the sequel trilogy and like necessarily like how what how like quality control is gone and uh, yeah, arguments about characters and where it could have gone. But the end of the, but the end of the day is like because of The Last Jedi and its controversial nature. You don't. I'd then followed up with Solo, which also had a 
well, Cell I was doing because it was cost because it was they paid to make it twice, so it was never going to make money back. Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah. this is not going to work. <laughs> so like you then have so you have Dark, a franchise. It was, like, it was like Dark Phoenix that was like we know this is going to be terrible. There's nothing we can do. We, yeah, we spent more money reshooting this money three times than it could ever make profit. So it's and it doesn't and, and nobody and nobody cares about it because they know. It. The franchise won't continue past this point because we got bought out by Disney. He was scared. So, Desperate. yeah, you have just has this. So you have this situation where like there's no fan, there's no love for, from the fan base anymore. They they are all burned out. Like very few people actually went in. I feel like went into Rise of Skywalker with the hope that it was going to be good. They were just curious to see how big the train wreck was going to be. Yeah, you you either got like that or people that were like, oh, or the people that liked RJ's film that were like, oh, now JJ's going to fuck it up. So yeah, no one really went. The very few people went into this movie, I think, where they're like, this is going to be awesome. So it's kind of unfort. It's almost unfortunate. You can almost feel sorry for like the movie because it just it never had it. it never had a. It never chance. had a goddamn chance. And there was no way if it was going to like with everything it had to work with. Across like <laughs> everything it had, to, <laughs> yeah. everything it had with, to work with. You say that's cute. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even with just like I don't even I don't even think a competent direct. I don't even think someone who like knows knows how to end shit could salvage that. I mean, they probably could have done a lot better than what we got at Rise of Skywalker. To be fair, I've sort of said before, but J oh, JJ, on honestly, honestly, I don't know. Well, you could have. There's, could have been done. What I understand, there's about three different, there's about like five different things you could have cut out of this of Rise of Skywalker. But we're not talking spoilers. But like maybe you didn't yeah, need yeah. to have three different fetch quests going on at the same time. I feel like once the spoiler you, drops, you're just gonna spend like three whole casts just. just oh, probably. About uh, things. Oh, probably. Well, I mean, me not complaining, me just laughing because like Star Wars always been that thing. I'm just kind of like, eh, it's okay. I've never been like super super into Star Wars. It wasn't your childhood. I like things. It's, to it. I mean, I mean, it was, but it's was that thing that like I saw as a kid, and I had a couple of toys of, but like I didn't care about. You didn't live I the always... Star Wars life for two years, like most people did. It's not even. Yeah, I guess not. It's not even like I take Star Wars its itself particularly seriously. I just don't like. I just don't like bad movies, and I don't like bad movies part of franchises. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, I, I, I wasn't. We, I, I don't think either of us were, were pointing at you uh, with the, the serious crack. With this too serious crack, it is true they do take it too serious. Kind of like how like Dragon Ball fans take it way more serious than it should be. I just don't want a film to sort of insult my intelligence by having the director of a, by having the director of another movie I like lick the ground to tell me it's salt. Because they don't because they Wait, uh, wasn't the the movie he made like Looper or something? What? No, Gareth Edwards. Was it Looper? No, Gareth Edwards oh. made Godzilla 2014. Oh, okay. Oh, and I guess he made Rogue One, but who gives a fuck about Rogue One? Rogue One that get that maybe gets a pass as the best of the Disney Star Wars movies by yeah, so people like Rogue One. Yeah, by proxy yeah. by proxy of its a of its a three legged of its a three legged horse in a race against a bunch of two legged horses. <laughs> I mean it's not wrong. I mean, Rogue One has a lot of nice ideas and nice visual concepts and it's but it, it's it oh yeah, like visual. It has some really striking visuals, but, and that's all it has. The problem with Rogue One is it's Mercury. set up about this uh, to be about this piece, this piece of on this Something ensemble else. cast of characters. And what. fuck me, none of them are mem the only memorable one of them is the blind guy, and Obviously the discount HK forty seven robot. For which one again? Uh, Rogue One. Y you're right, honestly, because I I don't really remember much about any of them. So, like, the two... All I remember was the, the, those two. Uh, also, the main girl was a thing. I guess that's about all I really. Was a thing. Could you tell me anything? Could you tell me anything about no, her motivation? No, I really can't. Just the movie. No, I really can't. And, and no, no, I can't. I'm that's... not being funny. And that's the problem. Is that it? If the film wasn't sort of entirely built around this like band of rogues, then that would be fine. But it is like the entire movie sort of hinges on them and their plot and everything. So when you get to that ending it's kind of like oh no this character whose name i still can't remember like, i think i can remember like Nitric three characters too, names from rogue one but also something else i remember Jin, cassian right and k2 and that's literally yeah everyone else is just kind of i think one's called bodhi or something 
I don't fucking. But that's the problem. Is like I remember the cast of like. Oh, you know it's funny too. Sometimes when you don't can't remember because the cast. Oh, that's that's actually something that happened to me with Shenmue recently. That was kind of funny. Uh, so I had I got accused of never playing the game uh, recently, and um, what I decided to do to just be kind of a smartass was I asked them to summarize the plot of. Uh, of, of the first game, just the first game. Because I was like, yeah, not a whole lot goes on. It's like, no, a lot went on in the first game. And I was like, all right, summarize the first plot for me. Uh, the first game's plot. And they, they they didn't. So I did my usual shtick of, okay, well, if you're not going to give me what I want, I'm just going to take what I want, essentially, where, you know, I just do it myself. I mean, and here's the sum up. Here's the summary to Shenmue 1's plot. Uh, Ryo's father gets killed. Ryo has to try and find out where, who the killer was and doesn't. That's it. So, 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 no, I'll, I'll give the actual, like, summary. So, uh, Ryo, Ryo, cause he already knows, he finds out his name is Landy, after, like, a long time of meandering, finds out that he's after the, he's at, well, he's already knew he's after the mirror, finds out that he went to China. He's like, alright, now I need to get to China. He works to get money to get a boat to China. His childhood friend goes to America to go to school, that's a side thing. Also, there's, like, that cat they take of, care of for a bit, but whatever. Is that, like, actually uh, quite important? No. Exactly. That, that's, that's why I just threw it out the window real quick. So, that's the... And then it ends w where he gets to the boat. One of Landy's goobers, Ethanol. who I literally cannot that remember the name of, familiar. but he looks like Gollum. You fight them in a QT fight that's really annoying. Nitrogen and, and then that's the end of the game. Gotta get back on the trail. And um, I was told not only was I wrong, but I because uh, not only was I wrong because I, a I clearly couldn't remember their name, so obviously that means I didn't play it. But also I was told that I got the villain's name wrong when his name is literally Landy, which is leading me to believe that. So none of us are like huge fans of Yahtzee, but he has this joke that I'm thinking is actually true, where he's like, I think people saying they like Shenmue is an elaborate joke that's been going on for decades and it's getting sad at this point, and I'm starting to believe that that's true. But anyway, I was going to make a crack that because you can't remember the names, there's going to be like that one fucking fan who's going to be like, if you don't remember their name, then you clearly didn't watch it. Because since I had that happen to me recently. I mean, to be fair, I might not have watched it. It's kind of, it's kind of so bland and boring and forgettable that I... Like, Red Letter Media kind of summed it up perfectly in their review with that opening preamble, which was like, I know what that is. Like, that's basically the entire, what Rogue One banks on. It's like, oh, hey, you remember Buttface guy from A New Hope? Yeah, he's on this planet. Why? Because fuck you, because you know who he is. Hey, you remember Grand Moff Tarkin? She's, fuck you. She's here because you, you recognize that. No, that's my Mothma, it, it, but she was also there. Tarkin's, it's, the, it's, CG, it's, Tarkin's it's, the horrible CGI it's, monster that they got. Oh, yeah. It's like, I under, it basically, it's I understood that reference to the movie. ATST! ATST! Yeah, basically. So it's like. It just. Like. Uh, uh, Star Wars is dead. Like, no one can really convince me. Honestly, I think. like I, I agree with you. I think what's going to happen is it's going to go to bed for a while. And maybe you'll see it, like. And maybe you'll see it like in shows, like sh like short TV shows, like Mandalorian, or like uh, games still. But I think, as movies go, I think it's gonna take a, a nice long nap. As far as I'm making, so their their brilliant plan of making a million movies is not going to happen. No, uh, they all basic. I mean, they basically canned the trilogy that the D and D writers were gonna do because oh, they went to Netflix. But then they got... Yeah, original, originally they were going to do another trilogy even after they canned them, and then that's out the window now. Uh, Ryan Johnson's trilogy. I mean, considering the fact that J.J. Abrams... Okay, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, don't forget, before D&D, &D, it was going to be Ryan Johnson's trilogy. Well, his don't forget that. His trilogy was still supposed to be, it's, as far as I know, still not cancelled, but considering how much bad blood is now between Disney and Ryan Johnson after they've kind of gone out their way to throw him under the bus with Rise of Skywalker... Like, there's been a oh yeah, he he's pissed. I mean, he is very pissed off. On the one hand, he should be because it's kind of dickish that they're throwing him under the bus. But on the other hand, no fuck him. He's a cum. I don't like it. like it'd be one thing if he was just made a shitty movie. But no, he is also an actual asshole about the whole thing. So I don't. Not, plus, I mean, they because like his job was to set up for another movie because it was a trilogy. So yeah, yeah. Like, and he I'm he failed at his job. I want, and I don't care about the next movie because it's not my movie. It's like. Well, originally it was going to be his movie. That's the thing. Right. It was originally going to be. They kicked him off of it after uh, Last Jedi. 
He actually got kicked off of Star Wars after uh, Last Jedi so... bomb. Well, not bomb, but well, no, it didn't do too. Well. No, no, it did well, but like the reaction that people had to well, it the made them the go. The problem mm. was it did well in the sense the movie tickets sold well, but the merch got. Merchandise. The merch, the merch was shit. It did not sell. Merch didn't which sell. Basically, which basically means a lot of people went to see it on the first weekend, so they made a lot of money yeah. off of that. And nobody liked it, so they were like, okay. So now you have Rise of Skywalker, where not a lot, as many people as they kind of needed have gone to see it, and the merch also isn't selling because f fuck me, who? Merch does... is a, and merch is super important for these kind of franchises. Well, especially Star Wars, which until now has been a license to print money with plastic with your little toys and. All looking like geek Darth Vader lunchboxes. Like kids don't want Kylo Ren lunchboxes anymore. And it's just because kids, 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 kids like the first movie. Because kids like the first movie. Like I, I know this just from other accounts. But like with the second movie, they just didn't enjoy it as much for I mean obvious reasons. To be it's incredibly slowly paced, and not a whole lot happen. And it's one of those things where things and it's, it doesn't even and it doesn't really have many. So like so say we go with the prequels, but at least it does and as bad as they are, they kind of are. You at least get those dumb big lightsaber fights, so kids at least have fun with that. The the not even the fight scenes were any good because I think there was I don't think there really was a real true fight scene in that movie. Do you know what the actual? You know what is the actual travesty of start of sequel trilogy of the sequel trilogy though in terms of things that they omitted? Fucking space what? battles. Oh, you're right. That was the hypest shit. In a new hope, we just had this like extended dogfight sequence for the final, for the finale plus the tread run. That was oh yeah, hype. it was really good. Remember at Return of the Jedi, where despite that movie has flaws, but then you have that scene where it's like oh, I I, enjoy, I honestly really like Return of the Jedi. I agree with you, it's flaws, but I actually really like that I think, movie. I think Return of the Jedi is has sort of has a similar problem. The sequels, the sequel trilogy has, and you have a lot of characters, but sort of a lot of them don't have anything left to do. So the movie sort of has a whole bunch of characters doing things that don't really matter because but the trade-off is that the sort of story arc between luke and vader is so strong that it definitely carries that carries the rest of the movie on its back yeah yeah it's similar to like uh, cause i think last week I, I don't know if we were talking this in recording or not or if it was just you and me talking it's similar to like frozen the story of frozen isn't very good um, I'm saying this, and now I'm going to say this right now before anyone jumps at me. I I do like Frozen. The, what carries Frozen and carried that movie is the characters and how they interact with each other. Like you know, barring the fucking prince. I'm talking about like Elsa and Anna and, Ola, and yeah, maybe not Olaf, but whatever. What's the dude's name again? Sven or something? Oh, I fucked up. Oh, I fucked up. I fucked up. It's like some, uh, some made up. Uh, Swedish. Christoph. Christoph. That was it. Some made up Swedish name. Goddamn Swedes. Oh, well, I say what you like about the Swedes. They're better than the Danish. Oh my god. No, to be honest, I don't really get it. But like every European I know just fucking well, hates. I'm dead. Every European I know hates the Danish. And it's like I don't even think they did so, anything. So, so what fucked up in the mission was I was trying to target one of the snipers and said Spider-Man zip line to a guy on the ground and just alerted so every sniper and I died. I need to deal with them first. That sucks. Yeah, it did. Dying is bad. Dying's bad, I'm calling. You tried not dying. Yeah, I tried it once. But yeah, like I don't know. I think, kind of feel like even when we get, even when we do just talk spoilers with Rise of the Skywalker, I'm just gonna be like, yeah. it's gonna be similar, but we'll just be able to go into more details. All uh, that's literally it. But yeah, to, it's been a be kind honest. of a shit sort of Christmas for movies because we've had like two. Yeah, honestly, that's the, that's the funny thing is usually Christmas movies are usually pretty fucking good. And this time, box office bombs. No one went to see wanted to see these movies. And I want, and that's like a tradition for people. It's just to watch fucking movies oh, on Christmas. It's just been a real weird year for films, I think. Video games have been pretty good. Video games have been pretty good this year. Oh, uh, actually, uh, I mean, actually, honestly, video games have been pretty good for the last couple of years, honestly. Oh, uh, shit, actually, 
had a co- actually had an interesting conversation with friends. I mean, yeah, we had like shit. I mean, like we've had like shit stuff, but overall, games have been pretty damn good. Uh, this uh... damn, I actually had a really interesting conversation, but I kind of looked at the time. I don't think we'll have enough for me. For, for uh, me you it. can probably bring it up real quick because I'm I'm gonna finish this mission first. It's the one where you first beat up all the snipers and the guards, and then um, Miles's father shows up, and then you work with him. So we're gonna be here a hot minute. So like, I was sort of. I was thinking about Batman Forever, as you do, right? And a friend, because a friend of mine pointed out that it's basically like the most sort of. It was the most generic film they could have made at the time because it's just filled with popular shit. Because it's like, oh, yeah, here's Tommy Lee Jones just fresh off of his fugitive role. Oh, yeah, here's Jim Carrey fresh off of like. Shit, like, uh, well, Saturday Night Batman Forever. Yeah. Uh, Because I meant, because I thought it was really weird that Kiss from a Rose was like the theme song of that movie because it's like. Very un. It's a weird choice. It's a fucking weird choice, and it kind of got me and my friend talking about film soundtracks and how like they're just like you get some ones which are fantastic, like King of the Monsters, but then a lot of them are just sort of really bland and boring and forgettable. And so I've had this thing where everyone sort of talks about, oh my god, the End Game Portals theme is so good, and then I was like, I don't really remember it. So I listened to it yesterday, and I was like, wow, this is just it's just the same fucking theme. I just. Like, I think the, I'm not going to say the MCU specifically because I think actually the person who's most at fault for this is Hans Zimmer. Mm. No, because yeah, the man, can, makes... but he can make like really good sort of part like interesting soundtracks. But then he gets hired a lot, so he just shits out a whole bunch of generic shit. But because it's Hans Zimmer, everyone's like, oh my god, it's amazing. Everyone will just take it, and it's like everyone forgets he did like Amazing Spider-Man Two soundtrack. He's done soundtracks for a lot of shit movies, and it's like there's just nothing sort of like you remember how when Inception came out, and then every trailer after Inception had the fucking Inception horn. Bruh. Even video games were doing it. Yeah, like it was fucking everywhere. It was annoying, and I kind of feel that's we're in a similar situation where because like Hans Zimmer, and I, I feel like, and I've always said like the thing I dislike about him is like. So if I listen to like a Danny Elfman score, I can tell that's a Danny Elfman score. If I listen to a John Williams score, I can tell that's a John Williams score. Like, they're very, they're right. very they admittedly have very distinctive styles, but they play to that strain. I listen to like a Hans Zimmer score, and it's just usually the most boring generic thing ever. And Marvel movies music is, frankly. yeah, Marvel movies. Honestly, I, I was trying to think about it, and I can't think of a single like. Music beat in any of them? I can think of even like one, even ones I like. The one I can specifically always think of is hilariously because it's not a mar- it's not technically a Marvel music beat. It's um in the s- casino scene in the first Iron Man movie, the musical cue they used there because it's a rendition of the cartoon theme from the sixties for Iron Man. Oh yeah, yeah. And so I, that's the one I always remember. But like, well, they have the, they have the whole Avengers fanfare thing. Yeah, but it's like yeah, even done. that's but just. Then... That's, well, that's just the, because because they change they change their music like every movie, like every oh, movie has it, ha, has it gives it so the characters' themes don't except like I guess Captain America. Yeah, I know. So like, it just because it really struck me because I was what listening to the God King of the Monsters soundtrack. Because fuck like me, soundtrack. if you're not gonna watch the movie, the soundtrack is legitimately amazing. Soundtrack's great. It has a really good soundtrack. And it's like, and I was thinking that, yeah, it does ha- It does also have that similar thing of, like, the key sort of theme that binds a lot of the tracks together, which is the Godzilla theme is, you know, a remix of the Ifakube score from, you know, 54, but a lot of the original tracks are also great. But it's kind of like, man, this soundtrack's amazing. And then you look kind of, and then people are like, oh, but listen to Portals, though. And I do again and it's like oh it's the avengers theme but it's got more like instruments in it that makes it bigger and it's like but i don't really like that theme anyway to begin with so it just being a bigger version of that theme like because i compare it in i put it in contrast to like the fucking super like you know the john williams superman theme yeah no i i, I can hear that in my head right now like the, the john williams theme yeah I mean, I know a lot of the Marvel movie scores, but I don't know if it's because I have all that soundtrack and I listen to them a lot, but I don't know what you're talking about. I think the music is good. I mean, I don't think it's bad. I just think it's very sort of generic. It it exists. It fulfills the... uh, Fair. But, like, even... Actually, no, to be fair, I, I, I take that back generic. It's just okay. If you want, like, generic, it's not a movie. All right, we can make jokes if we can call it a movie if we want. But, um... If we want, like, a, a one that's, like, really, like, I felt was generic is, like, if we look at, um, 
the uh what, what, what was it the oh i remember now the fucking metal gear 5 soundtrack where like not taking away the licensed music like the original pieces are really like generic action movie kind of music mm. like a friend like i remember showing uh what was it, the intro cutscene when mother base gets destroyed to a friend of mine and like she was like like she's not really big on metal gear but she's like why is the music so bland here Mm. Like she knows Metal Gear music, even though she doesn't really know Metal Gear. Typically, she, like you know, like of like other games, she knows like say like the, the theme from the first game. She knows even like the love theme, like stuff from, like and even like stuff from Revengeance. She knows even though she doesn't play these games. But like, I mean, everyone. I, I was showing her this, and she's like, "What the fuck is this? This is like generic action movie thing." And I think it even had the blahs in it too. Well, surprise I could be wrong, honestly. I, I could be wrong about the Blahs being in there or not. That that's that could be wrong, but like I said, I can't really remember the soundtrack to begin with. Check it out. Yeah. But yeah, as I said, I never sort of got the I I, I mean the, the portal scene in the end game itself is really is pretty cool, I'll admit. But the mute that musical score that everyone sort of went fucking nuts over itself was just eh. Like I've kind of heard enough rendition, like, I've heard enough sort of, like, epic covers of the Avengers themes that portals didn't sound any sort of different from them. Like, at the end right. of the day, like, I've heard a lot of renditions of the Godzilla theme, and Bear McCreary's version was still, like, really stood out. So, I guess if I'm comparing it to I that... Think I think you're just biased because you like Godzilla more. I might be, I'll admit. But then, like... Okay, here, I I'll, I'll help. I fucking don't like the Funimation version mm. of the Ultra Instinct theme, but I've heard, like, many English covers that are really fucking good. Oh, oh the Ultimate Battle one. Yeah, 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 I, I'm just gonna throw Sabo's thing under the bus through, doing this by talking about Ultimate Battle, because I fucking do not like the Funimation version of Ultimate Battle. No it's does. not good. It's terrible. It's awful. And w what's really funny is, so one of the voice actors they have, uh, who, like, goes in the name Kagi Films online, he did a really fucking good cover of it, like, before that, you know, Funimation got to it. And for whatever fucking reason, they didn't, they didn't like, you know, talk to him or anything like that. No, no, no. They fucking, like, used shit from, uh... Oh, God, I I'm actually forgetting what I'm supposed to do. Oh, sorry, just, just for more scraps. Uh, but, um, scrapes. But, uh, they, they didn't use his, which he has a really good cover. They used this fucking, like, really, like, unenergetic, not really, like... I hate to use the word epic, but kind of like it doesn't have that kind of like big f score to it. It just feels very like, eh. It feels very limp. Well, there's no pa there's no energy behind it, like you said. Like, yeah, uh, there's no energy or passion behind it. Kira Kushida. Uh, fuck, what's the name? It's Kira Kunyeda or Kira Kushida. Uh, I'll just look on my thing because I've got it. Uh, Akira Kushida, that was it. Akira Kushida was, like, a really sort of strong voice, and... Yeah, I mean, like, like his fucking voice in that is amazing. I mean, his voice in music in general is amazing. Fun fact, he does the, for, he does the uh, first theme for Godana. Uh, I know he does... No, 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 it's not him. No, it was him who did Godana. No, wait, no, 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 I was thinking of another thing. Wait, no, I think he did do Ultimate Muscle. Not Ultimate Muscle, like, original Ki uh, 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 Kaneko Man. I don't think he did. I think it did the original Kaneko Man theme, I think. I'll check this. I could be completely wrong, so yeah, fact check me on that one. Because I think he did, like, Kaneko Man go fight, I think. Uh, Kise. There's the Kaneko Man song, what's that one, dude? Oh yeah, Kira Kushida 1 to 65, fair enough. I don't think he was that. I, I knew he was had been around a while. I didn't think he because he did a Kamen Rider song. Oh yeah, he, he's really he's he's been a long he's been around for a long long time. But I wasn't yeah. But I mean, Kaneki Command itself is incredibly old. Old as fuck. Yeah. It's like how um Ichiro Mizuki, uh, Mizuki's still around somehow despite having done like the Mazinga theme. I mean, a lot of those Jam Pro because I know they both work with Jam Project. A lot of them have been around for fucking decades. Yeah. Gotta be a passageway we're missing. Check out the wall. They're all old men now. Yeah. But god, their voices are still amazing. There's like a lot of like especially like rock or like rock bands where like their voice just shot. Most Japanese band voices do not age well. Yeah. Found it. 
So I like when did you come out? You can only you can only smoke like a chimney while screaming your lungs out for so many years before it starts to take its toll. And plus, also like yeah. the plus also like the A's got to like have to wreck their voice doing certain inflections. Clear. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like how David Hayter like basically ruined his voice doing the old snake. Uh, it, yeah, it took a while for his voice to recover. Like, it took a couple years, actually, I think. What like, I he find... can do, like, regular Snake again, but... What I find funny is that he did that, but he wasn't actually told to do that. He just decided... That was something he decided to do. Yeah, because he's smart, because Jap... unlike Kojima. Because Japanese uh, Snake VA didn't, like, really change his voice much. Yeah, kind of like Japanese Goku voice. I mean... When doing... When doing all three of the Sun f uh, Boys. I mean... Sorry, it bothers me. I mean, she's a fucking, like, 90-year-old woman at this point, man. I mean, even before that, though. I mean, even when she was young and doing the voices, she had, yeah, like, she had one voice for top. kid and one voice for adult, and, like... Man, they're gonna be boned when she dies. You know? You, you're right. Because, like, that's half their cast. Don't going. get me wrong, she, she's, she's great. I, I love her as Goku, but, like, she's fine. Not, not my pref not my, like, but, like, you know, it's that thing where it's, like... Eh. I mean, those voices just... always sound horrifically wrong to me, but I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm done complaining about the. I got used to it because I watched Super in Japanese, so I got used to it. Look, it's like because in, in Japan, like, you know, Goku is always seen as this big kid. And you, and you know, a fighter second, whereas in America, because we got C first, everyone thinks of him as this big muscle, screamy Superman who blows everything up. And, and then you have Super, where it's like, let's throw out the little character progression Goku had, because Toriyama doesn't like that he became more of a hero as the series went along. That's not a joke, that's actually what happened. That's why he's so fucking mishandled in Super. Oh, it was just because uh, Toriyama didn't super give a sh didn't really give much of a shit about Super, so he was like, yeah, whatever. No, he no he does. What happened with Super was he had he didn't ha well, until Broly he didn't have an editor though Broly he gave himself an editor. Although I a decent think, editor, thank God. Although I also think a lot of the problem is it's hard to sort of generate stakes in Dragon Ball anymore. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they especially well, also the well the issue too is. Well, we'll, go, well, he's all about making things easy for himself, and if you just literally have a guy who can just resurrect a character if you feel like it, rather than having to get the balls at the very least, then Toriyama's gonna go for that, because that's easy. Well, it's not even, like, when I say stakes, I don't even necessarily mean just that. I mean, like, the problem, the problem is, it's like, how do you successfully sort of transcribe the level of pow like power difference between people anymore? Because it's like... Because they're already, like, destroying planets at the flick of a wrist. Well, like, once you reach that point, it was like, well, destroying a planet is not a great it's the It's the power ceiling. It's hard. You, we, they, we've gotten so far in the power ceiling, ceiling, it's hard to really do anything else. Like, it's hard to sort of really properly visualize how Jiren, how much more powerful than anyone else at, this, at that point Jiren was. And then it's going to be the same with the next, uh, with Broly, and then it's the same with whatever villain comes next. I don't know, probably some dumb shit. To be fair, all they do is just go, oh, this guy is strong. No, yeah, but like, yeah, they, yeah, they, they kind of stopped They stopped trying to put numbers to it, like back when Frieza. It wasn't even like numbers, but it's sort I think, of I think I think Frieza was the last guy. That, with, was, like, yeah, with, with Cell, yeah, with Cell, they were just like, oh, uh, Frieza is, Cell is stronger than Frieza. And that's all they really did. But it's kind of, you yeah. still need that place to like, you still need that level of comparison you can make, like... I don't know. It needs to be. It's kind of the problem with feats in that in Dragon Ball being so sort of undermined. Like blowing up a planet is nothing. So it's like, what? Sort yeah. Of, at this what, point in the series, like, what realistic way does an audience have to properly sort of comprehend the level of power being thrown around? Because it's like, especially because like how. I, I don't know. I don't think that's as important. The exact amount. But I mean, I don't really think that's really important. I think it's just sort of hinders like villains because it then comes to how do you sort of keep everything as like a form of progression because it, it's one thing where it's like oh, okay so like cell stronger than freezer and then like it sells like infinitely stronger than freezer and blah 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 boost stronger than cell whatever but then freezer like trains for three months and suddenly freezer is as powerful as a god you know it's stuff like that it's because he never trained before, see? So now no, I get, he trained. I get, I get the bullshit justification and just... 
Oh, it's stupid, but honestly, considering how, like, Goku literally climbed a tower back in Ball, and then now Mercenary Tower is a joke to him, is kind of hilarious. Ooh. This is a thing that's been in Dragon Ball's DNA since, like, Tau, I would say. It's just that they started adding things that they could destroy. Like, oh, this could destroy a moon. This could destroy a city block. Oh, now we're at planet busting, so... Well, it's, well, it's like, they got the planet busting, and, and then it became all about, like, how how quickly they could heal. You know, like... Like, Frieza was really powerful, but... Once he got... Once he got seriously hurt, and his the bottom half of his body was cut off, you know, he was done. And then you have Cell, who is, like, he's pretty strong, and, and if you blow him up... And he has, like, generate. massive regenerate. Yeah, he has massive regeneration Well, abilities. but there's, there's, there's massive regeneration. Yeah. Like, he, can, he can recover... He can very slowly recover from serious injuries. So, and then there was Majin Buu, who just, who just, like, he could recover from anything. Except when he did Yeah, didn't. he was, like, so he was so ridiculously... Like, you had to, like, destroy him entirely in one shot, pretty much. Well, it's like, it's like, it's like Cell would get tired, and then Buu never, like... Whenever they Buu was tired. Buu couldn't get tired. Like, yeah, he didn't get tired, and he could regenerate from being blown up into ashes. I mean, Cell did lose his entire upper body and just sort of walk it off. Like, regenerated... He walk it off, he he hopped up and then he like slowly re a lot of times with Cell it's like they like when Gohan blew off his arm and his leg like he could have blew he could have like you know killed him right there but he decided oh, I'll just let him regenerate because it's fun that's a lot of things in Dragon Ball 2 is like with the I regenerating mean, yeah, character I mean if Cell that... couldn't if Cell could have regenerated Vegeta would have killed him yeah yeah but, like back when he did final flash to him yeah because he, he blew like a huge hole in his torso he, he also torso. didn't. He also didn't. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, he destroyed like a huge chunk of him, oh, yeah. but it wasn't a direct hit. I think that was also part oh, of the yeah. explanation. Cell dodged because uh, he realized it could kill him, and then yeah. blew off, blew off his arm. And even then, and, and, and even then, then they're like, well, he's really messed off. up. But then Goku blew off his head, which is where the nucleus that regenerates his body is contained. Oops. Whoops. But you can't really get around that. Like literally, when Super Perfect Star comes back, he like points at his head and it's like, as long as the nucleus in my head survives, it's like. I mean, I assume, the, I assume the nucleus in his head survives, or another piece of him. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I mean, how he how he is destroyed in the end is literally he's like his body is launched into space and fucking evap it's disintegrated. Well, no, but it's like it's disintegrated, and then you see the nucleus also disintegrate. Yeah. So I assume I assume the idea is like if his head is blown off, but the rest of his bodies are he can recover, and if he's he's completely blown up, his, his nucleus will survive that and can regenerate. We. I don't know. I still can't. I still can't get over Boo recovering from smoke. No comment. But then somehow, oh, yeah. hitting, but then somehow hitting him with the spirit bomb killed him. But these guys are gonna the smite evil button because, because well, well no it's just no it's just because they were done he was like all right he's like like they they blew him up about 20 times and finally the last one stuck because they're like okay the arc's over Let's move. well no to be fair the, the explanation was because spirit bomb is basically smite evil button and he was pure no, evil that, that, no, was, that was that was never explained like that that's what i'm pretty sure it was th no that's what people think was the explanation at, at no point in the in either version did they say it's the smite evil button i'm gonna i'm gonna i still need to get to that part i want to watch again i'm pretty sure that's what it was though i i could be wrong i mean the real question i mean the real sort of art question is how why did they think the spirit bomb would work when it's literally failed every other time that's what i mean like it's a spirit bomb oh the thing that thing that's never worked it'll work this time the one time and it's the one i mean time. it could i mean it couldn't it couldn't smite freeze it. it's going to smite boo didn't kill it couldn't smite Frieza. It couldn't smite Vegeta. Uh, I mean, canonically, I... if like not not counting movies, if we're just talking about like, it, like unless we include GT, uh, the only thing it's ever defeated is Boo. Unless we can unless we count GT, which then you we can add. Um, I mean it. Uh, it defeated. Was it? Oh yeah, it defeated Omega Shenron. Yes. And I think that's about it if we include GT. If we don't include GT, then Boo only. And the, yeah, and we also can And then obviously, if we count movie villains, um, killed Wheelo, didn't it? it um, most it, it uh, most of the movie villains. Every, it killed basically everyone for the first like five until, movies until Super Saiyan. Until, and, and, yeah. 
No, even with Super Saiyan, it was like the, the kill for a lot of them. One of them, they combine the two where yeah, yeah, he yeah. goes Super Saiyan, absorbs the absorbs a spirit bomb, and then punches him with the power of the spirit bomb. Yeah, that was um, yeah, that was Super Android Effect Zero. I think that's the last one they the time they use it because after that, it's like then getting into Broly and yeah, because Janemba was defeated. Oh, it wasn't. Oh no no Broly was defeated with a with a punch. I yeah. forgot. He just punches. Oh wait, no, really it, hard. it was fear. Uh, yeah, it was. They, he got energy from everybody, and then he punched him really hard. But he didn't make a spear. Uh, he just punched him. Yeah, they but they gave him his gave him energy. It wasn't a spear bomb though. Was Broly in the second was killed by a Kamehameha. The, yeah, the family Kamehameha, and also Trunks was there. Broly three. I, I think he just kind of fell apart after a while. Yeah, and then they because there was like. Because there was literally nobody powerful in that movie. There and was Janemba was killed by the Gogeta fusion with the Soul Crusher attack. Yeah. The, o- the only the only movie that starred the two kids. I wonder why that was. It's almost like Hercule. Shit. Yeah, the I only mean, good thing about that movie was you got to see more eighteen, and eighteen was good in that movie, and that was yeah, that it. was that was the only movie eighteen got any justice in. That was about it. It's kind of like how literally the only movie... No, no. Fidel at least got a little bit in the uh, dr- the, the one dragon movie. She at least had some stuff in there. And she was kind of around in Janema movie. She got more than 18, to be fair. And then... Anyway, we'll we'll end off there. Because cause, uh, this is the mission's done. This is kind of a good spot to stop, I think. Good. Before we rattle off onto another topic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. And see you next time. Have a good day.